concerning presumptive tax. Uh, we do have a representative from the Revenue Col Collecting Authority, and that is URA, and her name is Hasfa Seguya. She's a tax literacy officer. Good morning to you, madam. You're most uh, good welcome. Good morning, uh, Priscilla. How are you? Ve well, I'm not fine. <laughs> mm. Pressure is amounting up. You know, problem of, of our government is that they they have they do the end before mm. the beginning so exactly. they, they throw things at the com, you know the citizens before yes. really assessing them and addressing uh, issues of uh, readiness and procedure how it True. will be conducted and things like that but mm. before we get into the nitty gritty of that i know that the financial year 2020 to 2023 is coming to an end yes. and uh, we're entering a new financial year but yet we must have our tax base literate about certain things mm. most especially the presumptive tax could you allude to us what exactly is presumptive tax uh, thank you very much presumptive tax is uh, entirely income tax but um, the reason why we uh, brand it presumptive tax because it's the income tax I expect to collect from uh, the small businesses and ideally when you look at small businesses they don't keep proper records. At times, there are gaps in their record keeping. So as in URA, we thought about how best can we help the small businesses to do comply? Because you can't give them a burden to produce audited accounts. It comes with a cost. And this business is starting. It is trying to, to, to it's, it's trying to climb up the ladder but it's not the easiest in this economy. So that's why we came up with the presumptive regime to see how best we can assess how we can manage that sector of the growing businesses, the small ones. That's why we call it presumptive. It comes from the word presume. Mm -hmm. In the event that you don't have records, how are we going to presume what your taxes will be? Before we so, presume, mm. how, what constitutes a small business? Because I've had, you know, business people complaining. Your tax officers approach them and they give them a lump sum figure that they don't even make on a monthly or even uh, in a quarterly basis. Exactly. And that is the tax that they're slapping on them. So in terms of assessment of small business, uh, what constitutes that? Ideally, when we are looking at a small business in tax terms, we are defining a business that does not exceed uh, 150 million as in its turnover for a whole year. Mm -hmm. Gross turnover. So that is the entity I'm looking at. And uh, ideally, when I'm looking at that entity, I need to stress this point. In URA, we give the client the op the, we give the client at least the chance to self-assess themselves. Mm -hmm. Because you're the owner of the business. You know when it works, when it doesn't work, when you close. You know all the challenges. So the first priority is you assess yourself. How are you going to do it by filing that return? Mm -hmm. You're painting that picture. Look here, you are eh? me so-and-so with teen so-and-so. For this particular year, this is how much I have sourced so in how much you've sourced then that's where we will take it you will take it from there are you eligible for any payment because when you look at income tax ideally in the tax law it tells us that uh, if you don't ex exceed 10 million in your gross turnover for a particular year 12 months and i'm looking at the july june mm -hmm. July 2022 up to June, mm -hmm. up to date, mm -hmm. 2023. Mm -hmm. What has happened? How much sales have you managed to collect? Mm -hmm. So that's where we are. If you don't exceed 10, kindly file, then all is well. Mm -hmm. We wait for you next year. Mm -hmm. When you exceed 10, that is where the taxing point starts. Okay. I tax the excess of 10 million. Mm -hmm. But the problem we have or the weakness is our clients wait for us to come. And when you wait for me to come, mm -hmm. it's like you're saying, kindly do assess me. And, and even when you come to the client, mm. instead of first giving them education, because, I, I mean, uh, literacy levels in terms of taxation are very minimal as a country, by and large, even though you are trying to rectify that issue. But um, uh, someone has just started their business three months ago, and then uh, an officer walks into their, their business, and they slap them with a presumptive tax without 
even the, I, I, I don't know if the officer has done the background assessment before they come to the particular business because ideally it should be whatever you are presumptively taxing is based on the database that you have collected on the returns. Yes. Now, when someone gives you that information that look here, this is what I've been able to collect, and then the officer says, yes, there's always that conflict because of misinformation. Exactly. I wouldn't say we are perfect in our side. At times those challenges are there because you can, um, uh, an officer can probably uh, meet a client and probably hasn't done the know your client first. Because before you go to this client, you should know when did they start mm. and what are they dealing in. At least there are certain basics you should know. Then. Uh, the, the issue of uh, their sales, you leave it to their client. But ideally, in most cases, because now we are closing the year and everything is in fast forward mm -hmm. and uh, everything happens mm -hmm. the way it is. However, for such uh, issues that may come up, ideally we can intervene, a client can come to office once they feel they were not properly handled, or they were given even an assessment that doesn't match their income. It is well. Giving yes, an assessment is one, but when you're not comfortable, mm. you have the chance to come and probably tell us that, I had these records. Mm. Maybe they, they need to look at them further and establish. That can also happen. Then we see mm. how to get a middle ground of what exactly you pay. Okay. Because we want to collect exactly what comes from your business. Okay. Nothing less and nothing more. All right. Uh, yeah. So give me the breakdown of how you compute it to come to the assessment you then give to the client. Exactly. With presumptive, uh, as I earlier mentioned that we are, for taxing purposes, we look at what you collected that is in excess of 10 million. And we have different bands. We have and 10 uh, million. That's 10 million but annual, yeah. but not exceeding 30. Mm. Then we have 30 million, but not exceeding 50. Then 50 million, but not exceeding 80. Then when you exceed 80, but not exceeding 150. However, if you do collect less than 10 million and you're filing this return, for example, you've put in 7 million, the system ideally returns nil tax. It will tell you zero tax. But let me give a scenario that we've exceeded 10 million, and maybe it's about... Um, 11 million. Mm. So we need to establish how much have you exceeded the lower band, which is 10 million. It's about a million or two. Then the two million you multiply by 0.4%. Mm. You'll find yourself somebody paying 8,000. Mm. That is the tax the whole year. And that is the beauty in one, keeping records. Mm. Two, filing your return. That is w the call, in fact that has actually brought me here. That don't wait for us. Kindly do your job, put in that return, and you can now even do it on the phone. You don't need to even get to any office. Once you have um, a phone that it's a USSD code you're going to use, mm. your phone at least should have some air time, about, about 1,000. That is enough and should even have some mobile money because you can even pay, make the payment there. Oh because we have a USSD code, mm. start to 85 hash. Mm. Mm. Then we move in the prompts, presumptive tax. Then uh, the system will ask you for your TIN, mm. input the TIN. If you have a business name, kindly input it there. We continue. Are you filing for this year or the previous year? Mm. Then you select, mm. and then it will ask you for your gross turnover. Then compute the way I, I was trying to explain. Does the system allow me to file for this year when I have Mabanja for the previous year? There is a difference in between filing and paying. Okay. Filing is painting that picture. Mm -hmm. The payment arrangement is handled differently. Mm, okay. Yes. All right. Uh, mm. What else do you need your clients to know about this presumptive tax? Uh, ideally, what we need our clients to know that in the event that you get stuck, we have uh, toll-free numbers that you can call. On 0800 11 7000, 0800 21 mm -hmm. 7000. And by the way, we're even on WhatsApp mm -hmm. on 772 14 code row 0. At least with that, you cannot fail to get somewhere. Because in Kampala, we are as near as Bolivar. There's an office we put at Bolivar where you can come in and 
cross check with us. Don't wait to be assessed because when we assess you, in most cases you may not agree. So it creates this back and forth, back and forth, which will waste your time. Kindly put in that uh, return. At the same time, it serves as a payment. On use star 285 hash, then you follow the prompt. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Madam Seguya, now let's turn to the digital plates. Yes. We, we are talking about technology and moving forward. It's mm. a good thing. But yes. there's this directive that's putting Ugandans on edge because uh, understandably by 1st July, it should be in implementation stage of yes. it. But I have come to understand that between URA, the Ministry of Works and Transport, and the other parties involved, <coughs> uh, there's still been contentious issues in the implementation of digital plates. First of all, what's wrong with our current plates? Ideally, our current plates uh, don't have a problem. But they can't be digitally monitored, mm -hmm. implying that um, they are not on any system. They are not on a tracking system. Mm -hmm. So if in the event that you're trying to look for a vehicle that they've stolen, you must have been very lucky to at least input a, a tracking device there to either eject it somewhere and stop it or otherwise. Short of that, you can't do anything. Okay. But otherwise, they were fair. Um, and if this program is to be rolled out, mm. uh, is, it, um, is it going to be replacing the tracking devices that were required as a directive from the president? Uh, can it do <coughs> the same job so that now we don't have to worry that uh, many months down the road then they'll tell us to do uh, to have trackers of the cars yet with the digital plate? Ideally, the first explanation and all that we are getting is saying that uh, once we go onto the digital plates, they'll have that the chip, the tracking, the tracking device chip within them, mm -hmm. embedded within it. That is a very good initiative. But maybe the, the co most contentious issue is one, it's a little early. Because now we are in a transition mm. of uh, completing handing over the motor vehicle registration database to Ministry of Works. And at the same time, we are bringing something new. And maybe the other thing I would say, because not because I'm in literacy, but we need to make the public aware. And appreciate it. And appreciate. The reason I'm moving from this to that is this is what I want to chip in. This is what I want to give you okay. so that they own it because it has a financial implication. From your engagements with the stakeholders, what has been their defense of the 735,000 shillings, the cost of getting a <coughs> digital plate? Ideally, that cost that, is, that, that's is way high. That's 100% uh, of way the high. present cost of a plate. Exactly, because the present, the, the present uh, cost is 137,000 mm -hmm. for that pair. And if it's a uh, motorcycle, it's 125. Ideally, it's, it's way high because um, I think we're also yet to hear from whoever the vendor will be, mm. what is exactly that. Why because really when you look at our counterparts... Vendor, <laughs> it's not the vendor to decide. Um, I, I think it ought to be government to be able to say I, that. I, here. I, I think these are the things yeah. they need to put uh, right before we can roll on. Because uh, even our counterparts in yeah. Kenya, the same arrangement is proposed there. But... A plate is going for twenty-seven dollars, which is about uh, one hundred thousand shillings. Exactly. So I That's think the um, plate in Kenya. either uh, maybe government needs to come up and try to make it clearer okay. because uh, we in URA we are equally implementers. Yeah. We need to get it very clear why that cost. Yeah. And. Let, let me that share the do. other pressure. Mm. Um, presumptively, this uh, is supposed to be rolled out by 1st July. Mm. The question is, does that mean the present manufacturer stops manufacturing and dispensing the current plates as of the last day of this month and this financial year? And then <coughs> does that uh, Russian firm already have digital plates that are on the ground to off-kick this exercise? Because the challenge has always been... That is the nitty-gritty we also want to know, that we when it comes to 30th, what will happen with the vehicles that are in the bond, mm. the vehicles on the border? Mm. What will happen? Because the nitty gritty needs to be very clear mm. and so that we can preach it to the public mm -hmm. that when your vehicle reaches the port on second, mm -hmm. this is what we expect. Okay. So that um, 
it, 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 it's a flow, it's a smooth flow. Okay. But if things are not yet clear, that's why we say maybe we need to go back and be a little more clear, mm -hmm. give it time, explain it to the public so that they can own it okay. and we can move together in this. And finally, in light of all this, please help um, illuminate for us the new relationship between URA Ministry of Works and Transport mm -hmm. in regards to car registration. Yes. Uh, what is happening initially, we, URA was managing the whole process alone. We were um, clearing the vehicles, then uh, we were basically managing the post-registration motor vehicle services. Then along the way, it had to go back to Ministry of Works because uh, uh, ideally in their mandate, it has to be under their docket. Mm. That is why when you see on the registration books we used to uh, issue way back, when we had just roll out, rolled out on the e-motor vehicle registration system, that, is in, that was in 2012. It was a commissioner general who was signing mm. on all the log books. So when that came and we, we, we basically agreed, now it is uh, the chief mechanical engineer from Ministry of Works. Okay. That's why you see the signatures have changed. All right. So that is, uh, that is so what much. we have for that. Thank you so much, Madam Hafsa Seguya, a tax literacy officer with the Uganda Revenue Authority. Well, there's a delegation that actually went to Moscow uh, back in March to benchmark on uh, digital plates. The return questions were, what's the capacity of Uganda to handle it, capability of the different stakeholders to roll it out, the competence, and basically the readiness of Ugandans to receive it, the readiness of the manufacturer to deliver, to supply, to install, to integrate it with the CCTV surveillance system. Really, it's a lot that cannot be handled within this time exactly. frame that they have put, quote unquote. But we await to see the 30th of June. We'll be here to let you know what the resolution has been. Thank you so much for having been a part of Morning at NTV. That's